In this tutorial, I'm going to quickly show you how to add materials, V-Ray materials, in 3ds Max. So let's start by creating a plane. And then I'll just put a teapot in the center. And I'm going to make sure I have shaded selected and edged faces for my viewport settings here. Okay, so if you want, you can open up your material editor. And if you hold this down, you have your two different material editors. Right now, I'm going to use uh, the compact editor, so this first one. Um, and you should already have your <clears throat> scene set up as a V-Ray scene. So now if you select any of these preview windows, you can get a new material by hitting this button here, which is the Get Material button. And then that'll pop up your Material Map Browser. So under your materials, you have standard materials, which you can use in V-Ray. But um, it's better usually to use these V-Ray Advanced Materials. And the default material is the V-Ray MTL. You can also use a V-Ray Light Material, which will basically turn an object into a light source. And then there's some other ones like Car Paint and Two-Sided. but And uh, V-Ray Material Wrapper, which you can actually wrap a different material, like a mental ray material with a V-Ray Wrapper. And it will work in V-Ray. But by default, you usually want to use the V-Ray MTL, so I'll double click on that. And make sure you're using materials and not maps. They show up in the same browser, so sometimes people accidentally choose one of these. But you want to make sure you're using the actual material. The maps will go into the material, but you need to start with a base material. So once you have that, it should show up as a V-Ray power shader. You can then change the color by changing the diffuse. That'll change the color. If you want to apply material, you can either drag it onto the object or you can select the object and hit this button here, Assign Material to Selection. Um, if you want to add reflection, you can change this value. And the reflection goes from black to white. So white would be 100% reflective, like a mirror, and black would be no reflection. You can also change glossiness values. If you ever use reflection or refraction, I would increase the subdivisions from 8 to 20. And that's just going to give you a sharper reflection or refraction. If you don't have any, if these are both black, you can leave it at 8, and that's OK. If you want to add a map, you can add a map into any of these blank slots. So for example, if I want to add a diffuse map, uh, um, so I don't want to use the color but an actual map, you can select this and bring up your material map browser and choose from any of these maps. If you have an image that you want to use, you can use a bitmap, or you can use one of these predefined maps. For example, I could use a checker pattern. And then if I um, select this button here, which is Show Shaded Material and Viewport, if you select that, it'll actually show whatever map is currently selected. So with this material browser, you'll notice a drop-down window here. And these are the different levels of your material. So you can see my base material here, number 25, and the map I put into that material. So if I want to go back out of this map, I have to select the material from that drop-down. You can then see there's an M in the diffuse. So that's the map that I've replaced that color with. So if I want to go back into the map, I just select that M and I'm back in the map. And each of these maps have their own parameters, their own settings, so you have to just select them and see what those settings are, and you can change them, and you'll, you'll see it update in real time here. Um, another way to add maps is to go to the Maps uh, tab here, and you can see there's my map checker. So you can either put it in the slot next to Diffuse up here, or you can put it down here um, in the Maps channel, and both of them are the same thing. Um, you can see all of these different map channels for the different properties of the material. Um, one uh, map that you might want to use, I'll select a different uh, preview here and get a new material. And I'll use another default one. Um, by the way, while we're here, another important thing is if you have, so the number of preview slots here only um, show the materials that are in this preview, but you can have an unlimited number of materials in your max scene, and they'll all show up here. So if you have, let's say, 32 slots here, um, but 50 materials, you can always double click on them under scene materials and they'll show up here in your preview. So it won't replace one of the materials up here, it'll just replace it in the preview and allow you to adjust the parameters. So that's something that's important to know. But let's start with a new V-Ray material. And for this one, I'm going to add a fall off map. So if I select this, one of the map options is fall off. And this is a nice one because it basically falls off between these two colors. But you can also use two images. So if I change this color, for example, anything perpendicular to the camera will be red. Anything parallel to the camera will be white. But again, you could also put images in there. So if I drag this onto that surface, um, you can't see it until I render. But uh, it'll fall off between these two colors depending on the camera angle um, in relationship to the object. 